So as we are building our resumes, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, the resume that I have. Whenever I think of LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn to me is like a static resume. It has all of the different, many, many, many different things that I've done in my, in my career, okay? I try to be as accurate and honest as I possibly can on all the little things. Whenever I write a resume, when I write a resume for, an, for a job, I don't include everything on it. I only include the job experience that I have that's relevant to the position I'm applying for. So I'm not hiding anything. You know, I always have my LinkedIn uh, profile in my resume. They can go back and research, but um, they want to see, you know, according to their job description, this is what th we need a person that can do this, 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 and this. And I can say, well, I've done a little bit of this in this place, I've done a little bit of this in this place, and a little bit of this in that place. So I'm telling them a story of how um, my experience fits the kind of person that they're looking for. And so that's what my resume is like. All right. Let's do it. So um, I want you all to form a, a LinkedIn profile. And I want you, if you're comfortable, you're welcome to friend me. And you're welcome to contact any, anybody in my, um, in my network that you think might be helpful to you um, in, in getting jobs. We talked about on Monday that you know, from the LinkedIn perspective, we are five connections away from every person on the planet. Right? You know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Five connections away from every person on the planet. That's hard to believe, but um, sociologists have done the studies and they said it's true. It, it's actually true. Yeah, you know somebody that knows somebody that knows the president. And actually, probably the president's closer. Probably the president's only like three away. Like, you know somebody who's a military member who knows somebody who's in the Secret Service who knows the president, or something like that, you know? Um, you know your, um, you know, like the guy that used to, that was the leader of, of music at our school, at our church, is a state representative, and he's been, you know, and met uh, Donald Trump in, in Washington and stuff. So, I mean, those connections are, are that doesn't mean they're, they're like tight, they're like close friends or anything, but it does mean that there is, there is some connection there. And I talked about social media. Um, people look at you, the trends of your social media use. And this can be a, a blessing and a curse, right? Because uh, the curse is that they are only judging you based on the few things that are posted about you on social media, right? So they get this kind of skewed dimensionality of who you are based on a few likes or a few reposts or a few articles. And this, you know, and there's no way you can define somebody based on their social media profile. It's, it's impossible. We are so complex. We have so many different kind of connections. We have so many ideas and beliefs and values and, um, that it is that for us to be able to um, think of it in those, in those terms, just uh, it doesn't make sense. However, that's, that's the reality of, of the way our... Um, our society works, we try to figure out people 
And there's so many people in the world to figure out that we try to do these shortcuts in our, in our assessment and our judgment of people. And so we're like, okay, well, they're this and they're that. And we categorize people really quickly, um, pigeonhole them so that we can kind of deal with who they are and what they think. I'll let you uh, do that. Like, yeah, you could do a um, you could do a, a provisional profile with your school email, and then later on build a completely different one. You know, um, you know, like you can experiment now and then and then build a real one later. So yeah, that's what I was talking about. Uh, this is this is just my take, I, and this may or may not work for you. But I th I feel like LinkedIn for me has all of my experience together. Whereas I do have like t ten different resumes on different kinds of work. Like I have one for teaching, obviously one for college teaching, one for high school teaching. Um, um, like for high school, I teach Latin. I've been teaching Latin for many years, but I don't have a graduate degree in Latin, so I can't teach college in Latin. I have a linguistics degree, which I can teach communication in college. So those are two different um, resumes. And then I've translated in Spanish. I've translated in, you know, in written uh, Native American languages. And so those are two different degrees. I've dabbled with... Uh, software and so I have um, a software you know different things like that I worked construction I have a construction um, resume and so on I don't know why it's taking forever I just it's just Nothing is loading. Okay, so your LinkedIn is going to be like it, hopefully. Uh, my my idea is that it's as, as accurate a picture of, of you as as you possibly can get. Um, let me give you an example. Whenever somebody, whenever I meet somebody for the first time, what's one of the first questions you ask somebody? If, you, if you've never seen them before, you never know. Like, hey, my name is Mr. Rogers. Um, so what's one of your first questions? You want them to get to know you. You don't know anything about them. Where are you from? There you go. <laughs> Where are you from? Now. Um, where are you from? So by defining where somebody is from, we kind of try to narrow down on, okay, what is their cultural background? What is their language background? You know, what are some of their beliefs possibly from the culture that they're from? All these kind of things. Now, in my case, how am I supposed to answer that? Yeah. Do I say I am from Paraguay or I'm from Eastern Europe? Or I'm from Mex uh, or I'm from Mississippi, or I'm from Texas. Um, so all of these are uh, partially true, Perfect. you know. Or am I going to say, okay, stop right there? You have time. I got a two-hour story to tell you. <laughs> you know, um, I was born in Texas, but I grew up in Paraguay, and then I spent my high school years, and, and then I've been back and forth in Mississippi, and also spent some time in Ke Kentucky, and. Yeah. So usually I do basically the same thing to them that they're trying to do to me. They're like, is there some way that we can have a connection? So in Mississippi, whenever I meet somebody to ask me where I'm from, I usually say, well, well my dad's family's from Wigan. And they're like, oh, yeah, I know Wigan. I know Wigan's families. You know, I know the Re the Rogerses and the Breelands down from Wigan. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That connects, and we have. I can I can elaborate on that later, but 
they are giving them some point. The, the reason for their question is to figure out, uh, do we have a point on which we can connect, right? And so I'm giving them a point on which we can connect, and then from there we can expand that connection as we get to know each other more and more. So it's not that I'm trying to hide information necessarily. I'm trying to connect with people um, on those points where they are, where they feel most appropriate. All right, so you you can uh, uh, LinkedIn is quite is quite good in some ways. It's very similar to Facebook in some ways, but very different from Facebook or any other social media. But they focus on especially you know your network. So. Think of it as a Rolodex. How many people do you know? How many connections do you have? Um, these are people who I've worked with before or I've met. Some of them I've just met on LinkedIn and they were interested in something they saw in my resume. They said, hey, if I got work, I'll send it your way and if you find work, then you send it my way, right? It's this exchange of information. Um, that's what a network is, is supposed to be. It's supposed to be an, a, a way of connecting and exchanging information. Um, you can do work on, you can do searches for jobs according to the job title, the skill, or the company. You can, uh, you can zone it depending on um, geography, right? You can direct message some people who are in your network. Um, and then the part that I was gonna show you is the profile. So this is what you wanna work on. See Tulane Data Science, Translator Albanian, Forest General Hospital, uh, you know, all kinds of different. Um, uh, if I was going to work at Forest General, I would probably work as a Spanish translator. For There's a lot of people um, who speak Spanish in this area, and, and Forest General hires, you know, part-time translators. Okay. Um, and it's not necessary to pay the premium. Um, you can do that. Um, if I was doing that, I would do it like for a very short time, where you can where it expands your possibility. Do it for like 29 days, and see how many connections you can make in that 29 days, and then cancel it before they charge you. I'm cheap, yeah. So, um, uh, all right, come on. They have a lot of things, they give you a lot of insights. If you're doing research on a job, they can give you, you know, what are the requirements for a job position? What is the salary for that job position? Um, they can even, you know, if you're applying out of state, like if you wanna work in Nashville, for example, or you wanna work in Memphis, or you wanna work in Dallas, or you wanna work in San Francisco, you know, you can figure out, okay, if I move there and I'm making this much money, how much is it gonna actually cost me in living? My brother worked in DC. You know, he was a, like I said, he started out in military intelligence. He worked for, for Department of Defense contractors. And then he transitioned over to Amazon, still with all of his connections there in Washington, DC. But now, because of COVID, um, he's almost entirely working remotely. You know, he could do all of his server work remotely. And so he moved back to Alabama, much cheaper um, uh, living lifestyle um, price tag and still making the same money that he was making in DC, um, which, which, is, which is great. All right. All right, so when somebody gets to my, to my profile, this is kind of like a resume except longer. Um, they can see, you know, I'm head forensics coach at William Carey University. Um, I'm also a graduate student at Tulane University, so I have New Orleans, Louisiana, United States as, as part of that profile. I can give them a, a blurb about, all right, what are the, Basically, this is five to seven sentences about 
telling your story, who you are. What are the most important things about the way you want to work, right? My goal is to use communication skills to build narratives and affect quality learning. Solving complex problems that affect our local and national communities through data-driven models, whether it be professional proficiency in world languages, communication, performance, or technical content. As a humanitarian, I have prepared my customers of varying ages to achieve their goals. So I've, all, I've over the last 20 years, 15 years, I have worked in, in education or training. You know, I have taught ESL, I've taught English as a second language, I've taught Latin, um, I have been a supervisor of different companies, I have worked in human resources as a trainer, and so uh, it's always been conveying information, getting people up to a level of skill where they can actually accomplish their goals. And so that's, that's, how I, that's the story that I tell in my profile. My strong research and development background gives me an edge in deep learning and model, modeling content and presenting it in an integrative format. So a lot of this, you're, you're reading it and you're like, man, what is he even talking about? Um, remember how I talked about in the very first week, vocabulary. When you're learning a new culture, you have to learn a new vocabulary. And it doesn't, you, you don't develop that vocabulary just overnight. So some of this is technical vocabulary for the kinds of, uh, if I was to work in corporate America as a trainer, what would that look like? Um, how um, a recruiter that's there in corporate America that's reading my resume, um, I have to find the keywords that, tr that triggers them thinking, okay, this guy um, can do this kind of work, you know. And it, particularly, um, I'm interested in data analysis, being able to compile large volumes of data, analyze it, present the rubric. Um, so a, a very research-oriented perspective on um, you know, figuring out what this company, so if I were to go into a new company, I have to figure out their culture. What are they about? What do they do? What is important to them? What kind of skills does it take to accomplish what they do? Um, after I learned that, you know, and I don't learn that just from asking one person. I interviewed tons of people on a wide range of things. I compile all this data to create these profiles of the kind of people that they are, and then I build learning modules in order to educate them you know, in order to help them to hire people that are educated in their culture. So that's data driven, right? That is, that is where you're processing the information, preparing it in an educational format, and then um, teaching it to others. And this, this is helpful, right? My years in education academia enable me to meet assessment goals and ensure training quality my years in industry, you know, I worked in the oil field, I've worked in construction, I've worked in uh, um, steel manufacturing. Um, so I have, you know, the practical side as well as the academic side. My years in industry gives me a real world perspective for applying educational resources to industry best practices. I'm a state leader in my field among students, peers, and superiors. Um, I actually um, work for the Mississippi uh, Foreign Language Teachers Association. I'm the classics representative for the state. Um, and so, uh, you know, I know people that work at, you know, in Jackson at the, at the State Department of Education. Um, and I work with them. Huh? Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I know. 
but this helps you know provide some level of authority i can relate well and work well with others of diverse levels and cultures right you can just look at a list of languages that i speak that tells a little bit something i build natural language processing models by using python and r and database architecture in mysql so then go down here and i've got a section on coaching at Cary, uh, linguistics and language processing at Tulane University, uh, secondary or high school teacher at Presbytery Christian, um, founder and owner of Panther Pro Translation. I worked as a educational testing services raider. Um, I used to uh, grade for the TOEFL. Um, okay. So it looks like I'm getting somebody in my network that's wanting to connect to me. And this thing is so slow. When I was at Southern Miss, I studied classical languages, Greek and Latin. I was also a, a Ronald E. McNair post baccalaureate scholar. I won um, Distinguished Classics in 2009. I did an undergraduate thesis. You know, all the stuff that I've done, you can put there. How many languages? Those are the, the most prominent ones. What kind of organizations have I been a member of? What kind of awards or honors that I've learned of one? Um, different. Uh, so anyway, but this has everything all at, all at the same time, and so some companies um, will just like cross check, um, you know, keywords, and you know if you if you match like at least seventy percent then they'll t reach out to you. Um, I know um, one person viewed my profile on LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. So let's, um, if you have your computer, let's start working on that a little bit, on um, building your profile. Um, like, tell me about yourself. What do you, what do you want to look for? What, what kind of skills do you have, or what kind of skills would you work for? Um, three, five, I don't know, uh, five or seven, seven years. I was a uh, 